Hello, Sepul Nation. Can you guys hear me? If you can, just send us a message here in the chat box. I'm Bruno, I'm part of the Sepultura team. In a few minutes, we're, we're gonna start the live Q&A with Derek Green. Uh, so you send your questions here in the chat box, be polite with each other uh, and enjoy the Sepulquarta. I'm just gonna send a quick message to the Brazilian fans in Portuguese. Fala aí, Nation. Sou o Bruno, parte do time do Sepultura. Em alguns minutos a gente vai começar aqui as perguntas com, com o Derek. Então, vou pedir para vocês mandarem as perguntas de vocês. É, a gente vai responder algumas em, em, em português, mas a maior parte das perguntas vão ser respondidas em inglês. Em breve, a gente vai preparar algo bem especial aqui para os fãs brasileiros. Tá ok? So, we're going to start the Q&A right now. What's up, Derek? What's up? How's let's, everybody doing? Yeah, so I'm going to put some questions here. And let's have some All fun. Right. Let's get it on. Good to see everybody. Let's get some questions going on here. Yeah. All right, first question. Derek, can you talk a bit about Autumn? It's one of my favorite songs in the album. Wow. This song is definitely a, a banger. That's what the kids are calling it now, banger, I guess. Now, it's actually um, a fantastic song, actually about uh, positivity, you know, really living the day out as far as living that moment super important um especially now i think people are feeling that you know each day is extremely important um to live it out the best that you can and stay positive that pma positive mental attitude is something that's actually helps you through really really tough times and presenting those thoughts and being around people with that pma it definitely can be an advantage in making the day really achieving that day. So the song is about staying positive, you know, living for the, the moment that's actually happening right now. All right. Wow, I want to pronounce his name correctly. Doga Kabas. What's up, Derek? Hi, how did you get your first tattoo and how it felt when you had it? Well, Tattoos are extremely painful. I don't know anybody that's enjoying getting a tattoo, but uh, my first tattoo was done by a very uh, dear friend of mine that passed away many years ago. He was an incredible musician, incredible tattoo artist, incredible artist in general. Um, his name was David Oraka. Um, he was from Cleveland, Ohio. And um, a few of my friends, we all decided that we we're gonna get tattoos. And so we had like a skateboard team, basically. And our team was uh, called Playboy Posse, believe it or not. And uh, the first tattoo that I got, I still have. And three or four other people from the team Playboy Posse still have that tattoo. It's on my leg. I'm trying to get it up here. Get those gams out. There it is. Now, if you look at it, I'm I can't really get it in the proper way that you can see it, but if you look at it in one direction, it looks like Jesus. And if you look at it upside down, it kind of looks like uh, uh, Beelzebub or Satan, as they you would refer to him as uh, darkness, Prince of Darkness. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Stan Ribeiro. E aí, mano, tudo bem? Tudo feliz? Tudo tranquilo? Mr. Derek, tell us your experience sharing the stage with Motorhead. Which is your favorite Motorhead album? Well, I don't know if I really have favorites. You know, that's something that uh, a lot of people ask in many interview questions. What's your favorite band of all time? What's your favorite song of all time? I don't have any of that. You know, for me, uh, the experience sharing the stage with Motorhead was like none no other experience I've ever had. It was incredible meeting everyone in the crew and especially in the band. Um, everyone was so respectful of each other. 
um, their crew and their whole group had been working together for a really long time. So it was easy. One of the easiest, funnest tours that I've ever been on. And Lemmy is a legend. He was always uh, incredibly polite, super nice, very cool, and just a badass on stage. Every night they brought it. And it was a pleasure and an honor to share the stage with them. I'll never forget that tour. It was definitely one of the best tours ever in my life. Motorhead. Chris Regis. What's up, Chris? How you doing, man? How you feeling? Good? You got an impressive growling voice, but your clean voice sounds great, too. What do you think of making more clean and melodic songs? Well, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think it can happen, depending on the music, you know, what what mood strikes us. It's really important to really go with the moment. And a lot of times, most of the time, this is how we write um, and create our music is really in that moment. Um, and so if, if the song needs melodical parts or, or we're feeling that it needs that, then we can do that and add that. And having that diversity is, is everything, you know, being able to branch out and expand and explore different ideas that you've never done before, you know, step out of the box. Um, but it's very delicate, you know, with Sepultura, it's a band where we always want to represent the roots of Sepultura, you know, the thrash, you know, this, the heaviness. So we want to keep that, but I believe it can be done melodically as well. So that those two extremes of screaming and being melodical, you know, you have to be very uh, diligent about where you're going to put it. But the future is open. Luis Lopez. Hola, Luis. What are your best memories from Dante? Dante Air. Hmm. Best memories from Dante. Well, definitely recording uh, Convicted in Life, you know, working with the director and giving him uh, ideas for doing the video for Convicted in Life. It's one of my favorite videos that we've ever done. And uh, it's really connected with a lot of things and beliefs that I have. And uh, primarily things that you're doing now have an effect on what will happen in the future. Um, it was fantastic working with the Brazilian director um, and, and working really not, doing something we'd never done before, working with like blue screen, a lot of different things, but he assured us that the video would not be cheesy. And I was worried about that, but it ended up being extremely brutal and violent, straight to the point uh, of, of where we wanted it to go. And uh, I'm really proud of that video, Convicted in Life. is one of the very good memory working on that video. Carlos Gonzaga, Derek. Do you have any motivation to do some project with other Brazilian musicians? And what kind of project could it be? Well, I would love working with other Brazilian musicians. Um, I get approached a lot of times to work on different projects that are metal. And I do play in a metal band, believe it or not. And for me, that's, that's cool, you know? I really think that's very awesome. At the same time, I like to be challenged and I like to do something that's different from the style of music that I'm doing. So it would be cool to explore different styles of music, uh, different artists, very talented Brazilian artists are creating music um, that I could collaborate with. You know, it would be great to combine with some artists that have something that's very original um, and very uh, eclectic, so eclectical. It would be great to work with people like that. So I'm always open to that. You know, there's there's no boundaries with music. You know, it's that's what I love about it. Thank you, Carlos. Alisson Silva, e aí, mano, tudo bem? Good morning, man. Derek, thanks for the agony of defeat lyrics. One of my favorite songs. Can you talk about the composition process from this song? Absolutely. Well, Agony of Defeat. Um, it's a song that I wrote 
primarily about dealing with depression. Um, there's a lot of people I know that have been having this problem for many years. Um, there's many different approaches to dealing with depression, um, but it's something that I, I think people are still learning about. You know, it's something that's that's constantly uh, being looked at. Is it our lifestyle? Is it our environment that we create? Is it our society that are creating a lot of people with these problems with depression? Um, but I think for me, music really helps elevate that depression that I'm feeling from time to time. Um, I think food has a, a big effect on depression as well. I think there's many elements in our society that create this type of depression. And so agony and defeat is primarily about that depression and defeating that, you know, with positive actions, uh, whether it be from food or, or, or talking with somebody or creating something, um, something that's very positive. And it's difficult to deal with, but uh, a lot of times um, it, it helps to talk about it. And with music and writing these lyrics, it was, it was really deep. You know, there are times I felt depressed and, and I wanted to write about that feeling that I had of abandonment, of, of, of hopelessness, but there's definitely hope out there. Um, and it's a matter of searching for that hope. Slavic. Derek, since you you support environmental and animal welfare, what organizations, groups do you support or donate to? Well, I love to support uh, anything that's pro-earth animals. Um, you know, these type of uh, environmental groups are, are fundamental. Um, for me, we I definitely been a supporter of Sea Shepherd um, all around the world. Um, they're a great organization protecting the wildlife in the sea and protecting the ocean. Um, it's something that's very vital to this earth on the, for the survival of the human species. We need those oceans and the wildlife that are in it. And a lot of people are very unaware of what goes on um, in, in the oceans, what's happening, um, and so they're a great organization that opened this awareness. And I've actually got to be with them on a boat um, in Mexico uh, on one of their missions. And it, it was, it was mind blowing. Just really, I learned a lot from it um, and seeing them work and it's for real, you know, it's the real deal. So, I mean, I'm a big supporter of Sea Shepherd. Um, I believe that's, one of the best. Uh, PETA, of course, a uh, big supporter, um, always coming up or actually being aware of what's happening around the world. Um, and they're a great source of, of, of news of, of what's going on. So I always love to support them and the ethical treatment of animals. I mean, this is something that's extremely important to my heart. So these are two organizations that I, I, I support. 100%. Okay, let's see. Who do we have here? Jose, Marcel, Berto, Di Souza. Hola. Y ahí miro. Derek, congrats on the killer album, Quadra. What song from it you are most anxious to play live? Hope to see you live soon. I hope to see you too, Jose, in the future live. Live music. That's where it's at. Missing the stage very much. Um... What I'm looking forward to playing live definitely would be Agony of Defeat, Guardians of Earth, um, Last Time. Uh, I mean, actually the whole album. I, I would love to play the whole album from beginning to end and hopefully we'll be able to do that in the future. But um, it's exciting, man. I mean, it just feels like we had everything pulled out underneath us with this whole pandemic situation going on. And so we were prepared to go on stage, prepared to do these songs live, but we will be back. So don't worry. Hope to see you soon, Jose. And noise. Let's see what other questions we have brewing here. Hobson Neto. Yeah, Iman, to the bing. 
Mr. Green, now at, at your 40s, I am in my 40s, is it more comfortable to you when at the stage to play guitar and sing instead of jumping, running, singing, running again, jump, jump, keep the crowd, haha, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, it would be easier to stand still and not move and be in one position, but that's not what I want to do. I, I, I like to, to move, to jump, to run around. And yeah, I'm in my 40s, but I feel good. You know, I got guns going on. And uh, <laughs> and I take care of myself. So that's still going on. And I still have the energy to do what I want to do on stage. And that's definitely move around. You know, it's like, I don't want to be in one position standing there. Um, I'm a vocalist. So I'm not... Uh, a guitar player. I can play guitar, but I'm not a guitar player. And uh, this is something different that we're doing now. You know, it's it's a whole different air. And uh, I think it's important to have that movement. You know, it's it's something that it's very real and, and very necessary. So despite my age, um, I feel great. And uh, I'm going to keep jumping and moving around and getting the crowd into it. All right, let's see what we have going on here. Rafael Nima, hey Derek, did you face any kind of racism on metal back there when you started? Do you still face some? Yes, I do. Yeah, what's up with that, man? You don't want no chocolate in your vanilla? What's up? Come on, man. This is crazy. But uh, yeah, it's a realistic thing that's out there. People don't like other people because of their color, their race, their religion. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, people are dumb. Uh, a lot of times people do a lot of dumb things. Um, I do as well, but I don't know. I, 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 there's always going to be like these type of idiots that exist, uh, racist idiots. And um, for me, I just want to continue playing music. You know, uh, there were a few things that happened in the past, but um, the reality of the situation is, uh, Music is stronger than any of those things, racism or religion or anything like that. Music is much more powerful. And uh, that's what I use, you know, that positivity from music and, and just let it flow. And uh, it's, you know, that those are the, the problems that people are facing with other races and things like that. That's their problem, you know. I'm a, representing a scene, uh, a music scene that's beyond uh, race and uh, religion and things like that. I'm representing something that's very uh, real and, and, and something that I truly believe in and it's open to everyone. So right on, Rafael, thanks for your question. Man. Darren Holanda, what's up, Darren? How you doing, man? Darren, Quadra is so well written and interesting from start to finish, in a way that exceeds previous records, in my opinion. Please tell us, how was this magic captured for this record? Well, in order to make this magic happen, we had to actually go through the process that we have been going through with writing albums, uh, touring, playing in the studio, communicating, getting to know each other better, getting to know our likes and dislikes, um, all of this is something that is a buildup. You know, everything is connected from uh, all the way in the past until this present moment. All those things needed to happen in order to write Quadra. Um, everything was a learning experience, you know, from when we started doing music. So this is, this is how it happened, you know, just really believing in ourselves. Um, Wanting to be better at what we do, um, that's something extremely important. We didn't want to stay in the same place. I think before joining Simple Tour, that that vibe that of wanting to create something different from the last album, not repeating ourselves, has always been something ingrained in Simple Tour. And so we took that and 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 we we really dug deep. You know, it, it, each album we're doing that. But it was a magical, amazing experience. And we really achieved uh, so much in the writing process and learned so much. Um, but everything clicked and came together in a, in a very wonderful way. So thanks for the, the awesome question. 
Darren. Hector Atiabu. Man, I'm just slaughtering your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Derek, how you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right, man. Hanging in there. Uh, do you get inspired by other things besides songs to write lyrics like books, poems, paints? Yeah, definitely. I mean, books have always been an inspiration since I was very young. Um, reading is fundamental. You know, it, it's something that I started at a very young age, reading and being really into books. Um, I mean, literature is something that's always going to be close to my heart. Painting, I love painting. I love the arts. It was something that I was born with I, as far as being surrounded by that. You know, I was born into a scene, a family that were very artistic. Um, my uncle was an artist for the government at one time. My sister is an artist. Um, my family, we all had to learn musical instruments. Uh, I was able to study art in school. Um, and, and actually have a, a, a great education, a, a good opportunity, um, thanks to my parents, knowing that education is very, very key in order to open your mind and, and, and for a young kid to choose a path that they want to go. So I've always been a big fan and always will be of literature, um, of, of, of the arts, um, and so I'm always wanting to expand my mind with that. And that definitely helps in the writing process of Sepultura. Thank you for your question. Good question. Ricardo Barbosa, Derek, what have you been listening to lately? Wow, that's a good question. I, uh, I have like a playlist that I've been uh, going through, you know, like I have, it's crazy, you know, they go from, crazy things from my past um, to certain things right now uh, that are happening right now. So, I don't know, let's take a look at the playlist that I have going on here. It's like Rush, Sacred Right, um, Rush Again, <laughs> More Rush, Public Enemy, Suicidal Tendencies, um, Ginger, uh, DRI, um, uh, TSOL, a lot of punk, a lot of hardcore, um, JFA, some old bands here, Raw Power from Italy, Metal, oh my God, amazing, Crumb Suckers, New York City, old school, um, Fugazi, uh, Jesus Lizard, the Jesus Lizard, I'm sure. Many of you probably haven't heard of that. Um, Dead can dance, a variety of stuff. Let's just put it that way. A wide variety of everything. Lucas, yeah, Lucas. When composing for Quadra, did you guys come up with the melodies first and then wrote the lyrics for the those melodies, or was it the other way around? Great question, Lucas. Actually, the music came first. So once I heard a lot of the stuff and ideas that Andreas and Eloy were putting together, um, they sent it to me here in LA and I started to walk around with the music in my head, listening to the songs every day, going for a walk, going to the grocery store, just listening to it. And I started to develop in melodies as walking, uh, walking along, listening to the music. I got, I bought like a big cork board I'll probably show you that on another chat. Um, with, and started putting ideas of the lyrics uh, that I wanted to write about. Um, there were certain melodies that came into my head and I started to record those. And then we all met in Brazil and started to go over the songs and I started to show the guys uh, the actual ideas that I recorded. Um, and it all really connected very well since we had been composing so many albums together, everything just really flowed. And a lot of the ideas um, were the same as what Andreas had in mind. So uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, the music is, it's extremely musical. It's, I mean, it's phenomenal. So it was great to come up with melodies and ideas uh, for these songs. So the lyrics, there were a lot of lyrics happening as 
the actual music was being written as well. Um, but it all merged together perfectly. Thanks for the question, Lucas. Another Lucas, different Lucas. Oh, now I have to go. Hey, Derek, answer me, man. Do you like Guns N' Roses? There are certain songs of Guns N' Roses that I do like, but it was overplayed as a, when I was growing up and I developed a dislike for them. Anything that's pushed consistently in my face, I wasn't hearing it at the age of what, 15, 16. So I wasn't a big fan when I was younger. Uh, I'm much more of a fan now and I have much more appreciation for the actual players in the band now. Thanks for the question, Lucas. After Master, what's up? What is your favorite Simple Tour album and song prior to joining the band? Well, um, I'm an Arise guy. That was the first thing that drew me into Simple Tour, Arise. It was a tape that my friend uh, Max, it's funny, his name was Max, introduced me to um, on, a, on a trip, on a road trip. And we stopped at a, I think it was like a gas truck stop or something. And he was like, you ever see this? You need to buy this. You need to listen to this. Arise. It was on a cassette tape. Um, and it, it blew my mind. I, I, I really hadn't heard anything like it. And uh, for me, it's, it's very emotional to play those songs. You know, it, has, it was the one that, that was the album that really drew me into Sepultura. And I felt that the band had, uh, it, it was something very unique. Thanks for the question, Arthur. Vinny Rodriguez, Derek, when did you start to sing? A hug from Brazil. Abraço, mano. Abraço. Uh, when did I start to sing? I started to sing when I was 12, 12, 11 years old. Uh, yeah, around that time, I was forced to take a class. It was called choir in junior high school. And there were no more classes left and I was forced to take it. And I didn't want to take it because you had to sing with a choir group um, songs that weren't that cool. And so once I was forced to take it, my teacher noticed I had a very unique voice. She was like, you have a baritone bass voice. You should really continue singing. Um, you're very unique. There's not many people that have this deep, low voice. So you should really pursue this. My mother being a music teacher um, helped actually. Uh, she was thrilled for the fact that I wanted to become a vocalist. I became more interested in it. And she suggested that I start taking classical music voice lessons. Um, and, and I pursued that as well. So I started singing, I, I guess, it was a pretty young age. Um, but, you know, everything helped. I'm glad that that teacher inspired me. Um, I'm glad that I had my mother to inspire me. And, uh, and I just went from there. Thank you, Vinny, for the question. Abrasima. Epidemia. Hello. Talk a little bit about vocal techniques. Well, I always say that a lot of people ask me about vocal techniques. And I tell people, stay away from alcohol before performing. I know it might loosen you up mentally uh, for some people, but it will definitely constrict your vocal cords. So don't use that. Um, that's the first thing I would say. Um, warming up, warm up and warm down. Very, very important techniques. Me, 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 ba, 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 ba. Always do that. Just wanted to remind you guys, like this video, subscribe, subscribe to our channel. Subscribe, it's very important that you guys become a part of the Sepal Quattro. Um, the techniques are, I learned from a vocal coach and um, I've been doing it since I joined Sepal Tour. It, it really, that pushing from your diaphragm, not using your, your throat so much, uh, but pushing that air from your diaphragm and pushing it out. Um, it takes some time to learn to do that, you know, a lot of practice and, and becoming comfortable so you're not destroying your voice okay um i hope that answers a, a little bit of your question there marcelo 
Hi, Derek. What kind of diet do you have for the tours? Greetings from Chile. Chi, 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 le, 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 viva Chile. Hola, amigo. Que tal? Marcelo. So what type of diet? I'm a plant-based eater, a vegan is what the kids are calling it. And uh, I don't eat any animal, any animal products at all. Um, it's been that way for quite some time. I haven't eaten any meat for 33, 34 years now. And uh, it's a lifestyle, you know, it's really how I choose to live my life. And so on the road, it's, it follows me, you know. Um, I eat very well, I believe, on the road. I try my best. Um, fruits, vegetables, um, and it's been working very, very well, to say the least. But I think a lot of people start to realize how important this type of lifestyle is. And so um, it's grown, you know. I, I'm doing a TV show called Highway to Health. And it shows what's happening behind the scenes, different artists, different people, that what they're eating um, and how that attributes to the lifestyle that they have and, and what they do as their profession. So I eat very well on the road. It's gotten better and better, you know, on the road. Actually, the whole scene and people having that understanding of how important food is. Thank you for the great question, Marcelo. Visit sepultura.com.br slash sepulquanta. That's right. Right below. Are, I'm just, just going uh, yes, just gonna tell my friends to a lot of questions here. A lot of great questions, but are we just really? going to... Yeah, man. Are you oh, enjoying that's, it? What like. that's what I like to hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to show our friends uh, here. That's our page for Sepul Quarta. And Word. there you can like find all our official links to our official merchandising. So you have like our store in Europe, USA, Brazil, and Australia. Uh, and here in this page, sepultura.com.br slash Sepul Quarta, you can also subscribe to our newsletter. You're going to have like a small pop up and Really soon, we're gonna have like some great news for you guys. You know, uh, we're just starting the Sepul Quarta project, so we have like a lot of, as you said in the first video, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot much more to come, right? Definitely a lot more to come. <laughs> Gotta check it out. It's gonna be a lot of fun, you know, we're gonna be as creative as possible. Ooh, that picture, jeez. <laughs> 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 I'll have to feed you some photos. To to use as screenshots there, Bruno. <laughs> yeah, it has to be real, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But look at this cool stuff, man. I got to get some stuff going on here. Represent. I mean, I had my shirt on today. One of the the many. Oh, my God. That's so. It's vital. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you, did you oh, get yeah. your, your vinyl? I, I had. I ordered the glow in the dark vinyl, actually. And it's at a friend's house. And but. Once this quarantine is over, then I'm going to go over there and grab it. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I like, I like this. Vinyl is, will always be gold. Always. will never die. Yeah. And we also have, like here for the Brazilian audience, we have Simple Star. Brasileiros. Tem loja. Pode comprar várias coisas. That's my accent. Sorry about that. <laughs> my friends from Sao Paulo. Tem várias coisas aqui. Coisas legal. Chocolate. Opa. You need dark chocolate, man. Some vegan chocolate. <laughs> But this yeah. is good, you know, for for anyone, you know, who I like I like the idea of the, the sack of, of money there. Oh boy. Looks like they're starting to cut down some stuff here. Gardening. Yeah, bad so, timing. But visit sepultura.com.br, sepulquart. Yeah, we're going to answer a few more questions. Then we're going to show them our store in Australia and also for our friends in the United States, right? So ooh, 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 ooh. that's right. Yeah. So a few more questions? Sure. What's up? Finally, like getting some, you know, not only dudes, you know, don't be afraid for our female fans. 
Um, Dama, Kis, hey Derek, you remember the guitar player Andre of Diablo Musica, Sweet Revenge, Studio, Show Livre, Dois Mil Days. Uh, yeah, I remember, I was there. And uh, Andre is awesome, really, really awesome artist, really cool friend, amigo. And uh, Musica Diablo uh, was a project that I did have in a, with other uh, Brazilians, and it was metal. It was very, very cool, a lot of fun. Uh, Show Livre, it was very cool to play that. And uh, hopefully we can, you know, do something Show Livre again. I don't know, I know that Andre has a, a whole new thing going on. Uh, with this band, so uh, I remember that. Good memories. Thanks for the question. Louisa. Hola. <laughs> Derek, I'm watching you with my boyfriend, his mom. And we had the pleasure of watching a band rock and reel, and we're anxious to listen to Quadra live. Kisses and take care of you and the band. Awesome. Great to know that you're watching as a family, you, your boyfriend, your moms. That's really cool, Louisa. We'll see you in the future very soon playing Quadra. You can count on it. The Blue Banger. Mm -hmm. When Machine Messiah came out, I thought this album was amazing. How can Temple Tour top this? Then you guys made Quadra, and I was proven, proven wrong. It's a masterpiece. How can you possibly top Quadra? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's a good question, but the impossible can be done. So I, I think we'd be getting ahead of ourselves if we start thinking about like, how can we top Quadrant? We haven't even played the album live yet, but uh, we're looking forward to doing our best. Anytime we go in the studio and the writing process, we want to outdo ourselves, you know, from what we previously did or do something uh, to challenge ourselves. And I think that's important. Anything that you do, not only with music, but anything you do in life, you know, it's, it's great to, to, to set yourself those high achievements because when you do achieve those goals, then it's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Thank you. The blue banger for your awesome question. It kneels in floor. It kneels in so bow. Hi Derek. I was the partnership with Emilia Barreto. Emily Barreto, sorry, I, my eyes are. <laughs> Have you ever done with another singer? Big hug, my friend. Um, it was cool to actually have Emily participate on the Quadra album. Far From Alaska is the band that Emily sings in, a Brazilian band. So uh, I was a fan uh, of the band before even meeting Emily. Um, Andreas had been working on a, a project and she was working on one of the same project. Um, and he spoke with her and he suggested that we should have Emily sing on one of our songs. Um, and it was great that everything really worked out the way that it did. I, I, I was delighted to, to know that Emily was gonna be taking on such a amazing role. It's something that we had never done before and so the outcome of everything that happened from that recording session was fantastic. It was, it, it was beyond what I could imagine. Um, she did a wonderful job. Thank you, Emily. You rule. Alberto Hiera. Alberto, what's up, man? Cleveland Browns, you like the NFL? You're cruel, man. That, that was really, really not nice. But I am a Browns fan. I do like the NFL. Um, unfortunately, it is NFL stands for not for long because people get hurt so badly. It's a brutal sport. I played when I was a kid. I used to love it. I love to watch it. Browns, that's my team, even though they're the worst, but I still support them always, always support the Browns. Cleveland, thank you, Alberto. Felipe Ash, hey, Dereki, what do you think about how things are going to be in the metal scene after the pandemic times? I was trying to do an accent, like a Brazilian accent. I've lost my touch. Um, Felipe, I have no idea. I think things radically change um, after this pandemic. 
especially playing live shows. Um, that whole scene is going to be very regulated. Um, everything is going to really change after this pandemic, I believe. Um, it's inevitable, you know, so we're just going to have to embrace it and adapt to the times, you know what I'm saying? So we'll figure out a way um, how the metal scene can survive. It's always survived through many trying times. I know this one is very big, but I believe in the metal scene. I believe in music and I believe we can conquer anything, anything. Louisa, hi Derek, how you doing? I'm doing all right, very well, thank you. What was the most difficult song that you, you sing on Quadrate? Kisses for you. Um, the most difficult song. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, there were a few. Um, uh, I think it would have to be. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 that's a really tough question, but. Um, Maybe isolation, just because of the speed, how fast it is. Atum, that was a difficult song as well. Very high notes. Anything with like very high register is difficult at times for me to scream, but once you get into it, it really starts to flow. So for me, those two songs probably were. Stan, you're back again. Derek, tell us about Highway to Health. It's a very interesting type of food. Well, Highway to Health is a TV program that I'm hosting uh, with Tanya O'Callaghan, who is a bass player, an artist from Ireland. And we go out and we talk with different artists, other musicians, chefs, different restaurants, uh, athletes, actors, celebrities, people, chefs. I mean, I think I said that already. And uh, we travel around and show people what it is like to have a plant-based lifestyle uh, showing a sustainable future, uh, different, you know, it's not only about food, but we do interviews with people that are in the process of helping this planet or what we can do and learning a lot about what's going on in this world all around us. There it is, Highway to Health. And uh, you can definitely check out uh, a lot that we've been doing. You know, we haven't, we have a lot of the episodes filmed and we're really pushing to to get that on a network um but we traveled everywhere you know we were in brazil we, did, we have a whole brazilian episode which is amazing um we were in cleveland my hometown we we're in tanya's hometown in ireland uh in her home country um and it's it's rock and roll man we have a lot there's a lot of cool stuff the show is gonna there's no show like it um and that's why i really we felt that we really wanted to show this, this different lifestyle that exists that not many people know about. And it's not about forcing, you know, our ways down people's throats. It's just showing people an alternative of, of what's going on out there. And, and maybe they can embrace some of the things that we're talking about and have, uh, and get some insight, you know, about what's the changes that are coming about and learn something that they never knew before. But uh, it's a lot of fun, and you guys need to really check it out. Follow Highway to Health. Oh, coming soon, very soon. We're there. We're, we're, we're still working on it. So it's going to come out. Thanks for the awesome question, Stan. Professor Andre. Oh, 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 Professor. Those music projects do you have now? Okay. Um, at the moment, mm, not a whole lot. Uh, this situation being home all the time doesn't help but you know what i'm just excited and pumped to be touring on the quadra album and so i'm looking forward to that um i think there's some projects that could come about from being at home um a lot of creative stuff is coming from this uh quarantine that's happening here in la um but we'll see what happens but i, I i'm really still psyched up about quadra you know it's just it's just a start and we have a whole tour and, and I'm looking forward to doing that. So I'm, I'm staying pretty focused with that right now. Thank you for the, the question, Professor. Okay. Sheepers, 
<laughs> Senor Sheepers. Hey, Derek, big fan from South Africa. All right. Motherland. Would Sepultura ever consider experimenting with African percussion and sounds? Love what you do with your own sound and the Kamatachi track. Cheers. Well, Senor, let me tell you, um, absolutely, why not? I mean, African percussion is amazing. Uh, it's, you know, we're open to work with all types of artists. You know, it's never held Sepultura back. Um, it, it, it's something that's essential for us, you know, to work with different sounds that grab us, that are appealing to us, uh, that we feel moved by. And I've, I believe that African percussion is, uh, is I, I, I feel that there's even that, uh, an influence of that in, in Brazilian, Brazilian style of music as well, you know, because there's so many African descendants that came to Brazil uh, and uh, that were actually taken to Brazil. Or, uh, or that influence is there, along with European influence, along with uh, native influence there. So I don't see why not. I, I think there are those little elements that are already there in Sepultura. So thanks for the for the question. João Pedro Taveras. E aí, meu? E aí, amigo? Hey, Derek, greetings from Salvador, Bahia. I had the opportunity to see you guys here two times, and one of them was in the carnival with Angra. Oh, yes, I remember. Crio Electrico. <laughs> uh, what can you tell us about that experience? Be safe. You too, my friend. You too, João. Uh, that experience was like no other. I had never experienced Carnival. Crio Electrico is a truck where you, you play music on top of this truck while it's traveling through the middle of the streets, blaring music for almost like six to seven hours. At least that's what we did with Kalinos Brown and Engra. And that was intense. That was something I'd never experienced in my entire life. And it was amazing, I have to say. Um, it was overwhelming, you know, there was so much going on. and um, But to be a part of that, you know, was something truly amazing and i love to you know that experience is something I, I don't think many people have ever had before but that was the real deal you know there was no joke um it was fantastic to see that part of brazil you know that element of brazil that's so intricate um and so man it was i that that was an incredible experience mind-blowing <laughs> took a lot of photos from that i'll probably share some of the photos from the experiences, you know, the experience of traveling around with Sepultura. I got a lot into photography and there's some great shots from Salvador Bahia that I have. So probably be showing you on one of these Sepulquatro days. Thank you. Andre, what's up? What's your top five Brazilian bands? Are you gonna really make me list top five stuff or top 10 and things like that? All right, here we go. Uh, Chico Science, Na Song Zumbi. That, I'm going with my favorite band. You know, that was one of the first bands I ever got into when I came to Brazil. You know, it was, they still are one of my favorites, you know, the top, the top five. Um, magical, that band is incredible. Personality, originality, sound is unlike no other band. Uh, it's too bad I never got to see them. Uh, live in that in that formation that drew me into them, but the songs from B, I'm a big fan. Beyond that, it, it, they're definitely in my top five. Hactos, RDP, of course, Juan Gordo, and Noise Mano. Uh, big fan of punk and hardcore. How could I go wrong? They're legendary. They've been there forever. So for me, they're in the top five. Let's see. I'm gonna go down the list here. Uh, courses, awesome. These are bands, you know, like metal bands. I, I, I this is one of the, the bands that I, I realized through friendship. You know, it wasn't actually through music, but it was meeting these guys backstage all the time, um, and 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 doing tours. You know, it, it just like grew into an incredible friendship and, and becoming brothers. 
So for me, the top, top. Um, let's see, we're still going through. I want to get a variety of different uh, musicians, um, not only uh, metal, you know, that genre of metal. Um, let's see, who else is in that top category? I know we're limited in time here. I'm horrible when it comes to thinking of bands at the moment. Sabotage, Moss. This was an incredible experience to work with him. Uh, the late Sabotage, rest in peace. Incredible, incredible lyricist, uh, incredible artist. Uh, he just knew exactly what he, he wanted to say and project that, you know, so I admire him for that. Incredible um, to work with him. Ohapa was also an incredible group, band, amazing musicians, a lot of fun to work with. I uh, never imagined that that collaboration could ever happen, but it worked out in such a, an amazing way. Um, so that, that was really uh, mind blowing to work with them. Oh, did, did I name five? <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay, okay, cool. Marcelo, what's up? Hello, Derek. What most, what most exotic place have you ever played? What was the most exotic place that you ever have played? Most exotic place? Um, I think Mongolia. Uh, that was pretty exotic and, and I, I never imagined it, it, it to be there. Like a Mad Max world with really nice people though. <laughs> I mean, it was really felt like beyond Thunderdome, uh, but everyone was so kind um, and the experience was like no other. I mean, it, it was, I, I had no idea what to imagine, uh, but it was great to to be in that environment for people I'd never seen a metal band or seen a band like Sepultura um, and the support, you know, it's just great to see how music can break so many boundaries that exist out there and travel so many different places around the world. So that was definitely one of the most interesting, exotic, bizarre places that we've ever played, Mongolia. MK Marcos, 97. Derek, what album from your face on the band that you think is the most underrated? Um, Good question, good question. I think the most underrated would have to be, from my face, the Derek Green era, um, would have to be, uh, against, um, I think it was underrated because I don't know people I don't think many people know what went into making that album. Um, there was so much chaos going on, uh, but what we were able to achieve really helped implement the band and to go further. You know, without that chaos, I don't think we would be here today. Um, but I think that album is definitely underrated. There's a lot of good stuff there, a lot of interesting songs, um, that a lot of collaborations that were very, very cool. Um, and it was a lot of fun to make, you know, it was exciting times. So for me, I think that album was underrated because a lot of people were expecting to hear, you know, a repeat of maybe stuff from the past or, and they didn't really give it that, that listen that it should have, that it should have gotten, you know, because there were so many things going on with the breakup and blah, blah, blah. And so I don't think people really gave it a chance, but. You know, that's that's good. You can go back and listen to it now. So Armstrong. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey Derek, unlike past albums, I noticed that you wrote all the lyrics in Quadra. Is this a conscious effort? Um I I guess so. I mean, Andreas was working primarily on guitar, a lot of guitar work going on. Um, and so I think as the evolution of the band, it, it was just inevitable. You know, I, I felt very comfortable in writing all the lyrics and uh, I, I've grown so much from that, you know, having that, that 
that openness to do that. Um, and, and learning from the past previous albums that I, I wanted to get a head start in writing the lyrics. So a lot of ideas for lyrics came uh, before the music. So this was something that was new and fresh to do, but um, it made the experience much better. You know, it, it made, I think for the lyrics to be better than they ever have. So uh, it was a fun time to do that, to really have everything done out, done way ahead of time. Thanks for the question, Armstrong. Visit sepultura.com.br slash sepulchre. All right. Dark. Yes, sir. I'm gonna show them uh, our 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 simple st our our star in United States, right? And then we're gonna yes. come back for the last question and uh in a, in a few more. Right, let's gonna... check out the simple store in the good US of A. We'll see what's going on. All right. Yeah. That's right. So All just go to our page and then here it is oh that looks cool that windbreaker that's me man that's got my name all over this one <laughs> yes beautiful oh yeah so the sepisticated sepulture fan <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cool stuff oh yeah. wrist, I, I think i need everything sweat top is banging banging oh my god the socks Patches, hoodies, got it all, man. Looking good. Look, oh my god, the socks are bad ass. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to be gifting that out to a few people. Uh, yeah. So, so we're gonna cool go. Stuff. So where we go? Yes, yeah, so we, right now <laughs> we want to invite you all to visit sepultura.com.br. Is that sepulquarta? You have everything there. All our links everything related to Sepultura. And in a few minutes, in this link below, we're going to watch our live performance. Yes. Agony of the Feet. Can you tell us a little bit about this version? Yes. We're going to be watching a live version of Agony of the Feet. Yeah, everybody in their own space doing their own thing. Try to keep it interesting for you guys. So, you know. That's 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 where we're at right now, you know. That's the lives, you know. This is what we're doing in life right now. A lot of stuff in our own home and uh, rocking out. So we hope you guys enjoy agony of defeat. So um, let's yeah. let's yes. do like the last question here, and then we okay. go straight to the agony of defeat video. Okay. <laughs> here it let's is. Wow, you have to pick the people at the. Very unique names. <laughs> Silva Neto. Is that a Brazilian? Silval. Silval. Silval Neto. Is that a common name in, in yeah. Brazil? Yeah. First time I've ever heard it. Hey, Silval. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. Derek, what do you miss the most from living in Brazil? Enois. Enois, mano. Putz, meu. Adoro falar em português. Tenho saudades muito e ah, eu adoro brasileiros. <laughs> so I miss I miss Brazilians more than anything, and uh, I look forward to to being back, you know, to really performing and tocando na palco, mano. That's 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 where we live, you know, sepultura. And always, valeu, obrigado. I just want to say goodbye to everyone that participated uh, on the Sepulchre. Visit sepultura.com.br, Sepulchre, please, you know, and stay tuned in, like this video, and subscribe to our channel. And uh, wow, thanks a lot, everybody. You guys have been awesome, really cool questions. And uh, we're going to try to keep this as interesting as possible for you guys. So keep Stay tuned in and get ready to watch this playthrough video, Agony of Defeat. We love you guys. And always, falou, tchau, abraço.